We turn now to mental illness, its devastating effect on millions, and the question of whether police departments are equipped to handle people who suffer from these conditions. ABC's Trevor Alt reports on this nationwide problem through the eyes of a family upended by schizophrenia and the people trying to reimagine crisis response work. Say something. When it first happened, he was gone. He was not here with us anymore. And imagine looking at your son standing in front of you, beautiful, all in one piece like he always was, right there, but gone. It's like a death, but you don't get to grieve like a death. You don't get to move past it like a death. Look at Facebook and look at your son's friends growing up and your son is just kind of stuck in time and you have to let go of all the dreams that you have. My disappointment is even secondary to imagine his disappointment. He lost the life that he had too. Tucked into the forested hills of southern Washington, you'll find the home of Mimi Feldman and her husband, Craig O'Rourke, both of them lifelong artists. See all these lines, of these post-its? Oh, so, okay. They're all ideas backed up here. And inside, hanging next to their own work, is that of their son, Nick, painted before his mental illness, in Mimi's words, swept through their lives like a gale-force hurricane. His drive to push color across the surface. It is so strong that he has to keep doing it no matter what. And I realized that he has this disease that makes maybe his mind a scary place sometimes. Nick is one of more than two million Americans diagnosed with schizophrenia, characterized by delusional thinking and hallucinations. The disease deteriorates the brain. There is no blanket treatment, and even the most effective medication will likely come with significant side effects. The disease is progressive, so the disease changes, and then it has to be addressed with more medication, or very often, the person themselves feels that they're better now, and then they stop taking the medication. As I sat down with Nick, his yeah. parents told me because of his latest medication, this was the best he'd been in a decade. Is it possible for you to describe what uh, it's like with your mental illness? Like stress and um, in, in balance, like with uh, mood and energy. Yeah. Do you think that people need to learn more about that subject? Well, I know that people can be misunderstood. And what many people misunderstand is that a person with a mental illness is not inherently violent. In fact, government data shows people with severe mental illness are more likely to be victims of violence than perpetrators. But in a crisis, a person with delusional thinking is unlikely to respond to rational intervention. People with untreated mental illness are 16 times more likely to be killed by law enforcement. It's something Mimi fears whenever her son comes into contact with the police. Actually, I called 911 and I asked for an ambulance and the police showed up first. And I started to explain Nick's situation. And he said to me, don't, don't even tell me, you know, don't bother telling me, tell it to the ambulance, tell it to the medical people when they come. And I looked him in the eye and I said, well, you're the guy with the gun. So I'm gonna tell this to you. And I'm gonna stand between you and my son. There's a lot of cities that are trying to shift towards more crisis management teams. Are you mm -hmm. happy to see those developments? Yeah, I'm very happy to see that develop. I think that it's so far from being functional. It ties into the whole mental health system, which is so terribly broken. I mean, I think to call it broken is a compliment. Just a few hours south, Eugene, Oregon, is one of the first cities to adopt that approach. We're having some really, really candid conversations about whether or not the police department should be the response to some of those crises. For more than 30 years, Eugene has relied on a public safety system called CAHOOTS, crisis assistance helping out on the streets. Instead of sending a cop for mental health emergencies, they deploy a medic and a crisis worker, neither of them armed, to try to safely de-escalate the situation. 
And the city's police chief, Chris Skinner, says his department is one of the program's biggest supporters. For years, we've been asked to do more and more and more. We're oftentimes the fallback or the, the trap that catches everything that society has not created capacity for. But right now, as much of the country lacks the comfort of a crisis response team, mental health emergencies can quickly turn into a terrified parent like Mimi begging for patience or mercy between an officer and her son, something most would consider a nightmare. But she says in America, it's a privilege. If I was black or brown, if I was in different shoes in this life, I don't know that I would have the luxury of saying, I'm going to stand between you and my son. I'm finding myself fighting battles and in situations that weren't necessarily anything that I thought I would, but I get to go in there with a different position of privilege than other people do. The examples of these encounters becoming deadly are countless. In Texas, Patrick Warren Jr. says he called 911 asking for a mental health checkup of his father, only to see his dad gunned down in front of him. In California, the family of Angelo Quinto says he was depressed and having a mental health episode and died days after an officer allegedly put a knee on his neck, which the police deny. In New York, Joe Prude called emergency services, saying his brother Daniel had a history of schizophrenia and was suicidal. Daniel died days after officers placed a mesh hood over his head, face down, after he spat at them. Police-related deaths like these have sparked growing calls to reimagine policing in America. In Jamaica, Queens, New York, Erica Ford is the CEO of Life Camp, a crisis management service similar to Cahoots in Eugene. Her team is partnering with the NYPD to address issues like mental illness and the police response to it in hopes of ending gun violence. Out there doing dynamic work for the community. The problem is in the general training, how much do you respect the community that you say you serve and protecting? It takes us not living in our own lenses and our own histories about how we approach any individual. And already among the people listening to Erica and her team is the Biden administration, proposing a federal plan to allocate $5 billion toward community-based policing. The whole system comes at mental health, right? We need to shift some of the allocations of what NYPD is doing to the funds of the New York City crisis management system. Of course, the best response to a mental health crisis is one that treats the illness before it's a crisis. And right now, in this country, with this health care system, that can come at a heavy cost. Now I'm doing the best I can, but I mean, even me, with everything in my favor, it's been nearly impossible, and it's taken over my whole life. Your son is not who he was supposed to be, as you've said. Mm -hmm. What are your hopes and dreams for Nick now? In the early years when it was so hard and I was trying to hold everything together, I had a little routine where I would, after dinner, I would go in the bathroom and I would run the shower and I would just lie down on the bathroom floor and cry. And um, one day I came out of my little cry fest and there was one of my daughters and she said to me, Mom, why are you crying? And I said, I'm crying because I miss your brother. And she says, what do you mean you miss him? He's not gone, he's still here. And I just said, yeah, but he's not who he was supposed to be. And she looks at me and she says, yeah, he is. It's just not what you thought. Such an important story to tell. Our thanks to Trevor for bringing that to us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.